okay all of you got 14th a diminished image of an object is to be obtained on a screen 1 meter from it this can be achieved by placing convex lens of focal length less than 0.25 meter concave lens now first of all this is getting formed on the screen right so since it is getting formed on the screen it has to be a real object okay so plane mirror creates a virtual object sorry virtual image so since it is formed on a screen it has to be real image so plane mirror is not possible even convex mirror forms virtual image even this cannot be put on the screen right and then concave lens also uh, will create a virtual image so it has to be option 3 only okay now let's talk about the 15th one an eye specialist prescribes spectacles having combinations of convex lens of focal length 40 in contact with the concave the power of the combination so you can see that similar concept was tested in j earlier also so simply you need to write down the combined power as 1 by f1 should be in meters plus 1 by f2 now you have to take care of the signs also it is a concave lens so minus of 0 0.25 you have to write okay so i think you'll get uh, what minus 1.5 okay this is equal to 4 and this is 10 by 4 so yeah okay so let's quickly move to the next few questions so you might be seeing that majority of the questions are straightforward from this chapter but sometimes questions get twisted so there is a high chance that an easy question will come from this particular chapter uh, i mean these two chapters so make sure you uh, do good amount of practice because high chance that uh, you know if you do some practice you will get the answer in the exam these two questions attempt okay all of you getting question 16th answer as pi as in option number three it's a single slit experiment okay let me solve question number 16 those who have got 16 can move to question number 17 parallel monochromatic beam of light incident on a narrow slit so this is the narrow slit it incident here diffraction pattern is formed here in this screen okay at the first minimum of the diffraction pattern the phase difference between the rays coming from the two edges of the slit is what now first minima location you should know suppose this is distance y okay distance y should be equal to lambda d by a where a is the width of this single slit okay similar expression comes for the maxima in the double slit experiment but for single slit experiment this is what uh, the case is okay minima happens to be at a distance of lambda d by a okay now we need to find the phase difference between the rays coming from the two edges of this slit okay now let's connect these two rays so one is this one and the other one is this so we need to find the phase difference between these two okay now we know the standard procedure of finding the phase difference right you drop a perpendicular on all right so there is a standard way to find the uh, you know phase difference or path difference you just drop a perpendicular like this and this is the path difference this is delta x okay now in order to find delta x what we typically do is we connect this line like that okay and then you know right this this is the angle theta then even this angle is theta so delta x is this distance which is a a sine of theta okay and if theta is very less then delta x i can also approximate it as a tan of theta fine so this is delta x now corresponding to this delta x 
the phase difference is 2 pi by lambda into delta x so 2 pi by lambda <clears throat> into delta x which is 8 tan theta now tan theta is what y divided by this distance which is d okay y is what lambda d by a divided by d which is tan theta okay now you see that lambda get cancelled a get cancelled and d get cancelled okay so phase difference is 2 pi okay so 16th option number 4 is correct many of you have said 3 right okay so i guess you have tried question number 17 also let's see how we can go about it now this kind of question where it there is no definitive option as in it doesn't talk about distance being 5.4 centimeter or 20 centimeter like that it doesn't talk about a definitive uh, statement but it just tries to you know find out the estimate of it where exactly it will be between which and which point this can be done best by using ray diagram okay now let us see how we can utilize ray diagram to answer this question we have concave mirror which is placed on the horizontal table this is the horizontal table so we have a concave mirror like this this is the concave mirror and axis is vertically upwards okay so this is the axis o is the pole and c is the center of curvature so let's say c is here okay a point object is placed at c only so there is an object here okay so the image will be where right now image will be at c only okay because whatever ray that comes out of c will hit the mirror normally so the ray will retrace its path okay now we are filling uh, the mirror with water let us say this is the water okay so if i fill this with water what will happen here is that the ray that was normal to the mirror suppose this ray if it keeps on going then it will hit the mirror normally and the ray will just reflect back but what will happen now because of the refraction the ray will bend towards the normal right so if i zoom this i will get a situation like this suppose ray is coming like this this is the normal to the water air interface so light will just bend towards the normal like this okay and this is the path for the normal uh, this thing this is the path for the uh, as in this is the path where it hits the mirror normally okay now it will hit like this okay so for the mirror the object is object appears to be somewhere there at the top beyond c okay then only light will uh, you know appear to bend towards the normal so the image is slightly away from the c okay so that is why uh, when image is slightly away from c the object will come closer to the uh, as in between o and c it will go right so it will be a real image located between point c and o all right so this actually uh, will be solved best if you are able to analyze the ray diagram okay because there is no definitive statement over here you just have to just uh, you know um, evaluate the options okay all of you clear about this any doubt type in yes or no all right see anyways this is getting recorded so uh, you can always refer this any moment these two questions start solving okay so what is the answer for 18th again it is an uh, theoretical question right it's a theoretical one all right should we 
Sol now. Fine. Question number 18. First of all, yellow light will be like of the order of 500 uh, nanometers. Right. And this is a wavelength of yellow light and wavelength of X-ray is like, uh, I think one to hundred Armstrong. Okay. Or whatever it may be, you know that the wavelength of X-ray is very, very less than the wavelength of yellow light or frequency of X-ray is very high compared to the frequency of yellow light. Okay. Now in the young, sorry, in the single set experiment or in fact, in the double set experiment also, both of the cases, the assumption is that the, the size of slit is comparable to the wavelength. Okay. Now, if you use X-ray, the wavelength is so less that for X-ray, uh, it is not a small hole. It's not a small hole where you can see it, say that it's a single set experiment, right? It's not a narrow opening for X-ray. It is like, you know, a, a huge opening. So there will be no fringes that will be observed. So that is why option number four is correct over here. Okay. Because light will bend from the edges or diffraction will happen only when wavelength is comparable to the size of the hole. Okay. Now do the 19th one. 19th, what do you think is the answer? Okay. Now this is a thin slice of the cylinder. Thin slice that cut out of the cylinder. So this cylinder actually, it, it's a part of cylinder that comes out of your screen. Okay. So when you look at this ray, okay. And if you look at all the rays, suppose are hitting along the line, which line is coming out of your screen, then all of these line will be similar, right? They will encounter same amount of path difference. They will have an, uh, you know, refraction over here, uh, like, like this, it will go and then it will simply bend away from the normal and then reflection will happen. So all the lights which are in this line, the line which comes out of your screen will encounter this scenario. Fine. So there is a line symmetry over here. Fine. So there is a line symmetry. It is not a circular symmetry. So that is why it will be straight. The fringes will be straight. Okay. So these are, I think, uh, these are not numerical. So you just have to uh, know actually some concepts to solve these uh, theoretical ones. But it is very easy to go wrong in these theoretical questions because uh, you know, you can think in any direction. So it becomes tricky at times. Whereas numerical, uh, you'll get a definitive answer. So all these ones. Oh, you're saying option D fringe spacing spacing increases as we go outwards. See outwards means you are coming out of the screen. Okay. If it is straight, then there is no question of spacing when you are coming out of the screen because along the same screen, same along the one straight line, there is only one fringe. Okay. In last option, it was not clearly written whether it is a straight or a circular fringe. They are talking about when they talk about spacing. Okay. Good that you have answered the second one initially in a compound microscope, the intermediate image, we know intermediate image is inverted, real and magnified. So this is just knowledge based question. Uh, if you have studied uh, your NCRT properly, then you'll get it immediately. Question number 20. Are you able to read it properly because the font size 
became very less or should i upload it again so 20th question is on the lens maker formula so we have this formula 1 by f is equal to mu 2 by mu 1 minus 1 multiplied by 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 right stress okay okay fine now it is fine stress are you watching on mobile phone anyways um, it's fine so we have a concave lens which has refractive index 1.5 so basically mu2 is refractive index of the material which is 1.5 okay so same radius of curvatures were there all right in the concave lens so it was like this this is the concave lens right so so basically for this radius of curvature if you take minus r and for that side you have to take it as plus r okay so r1 is minus r and r2 is plus r okay so when you immerse in a medium of refractive index 1.75 then what will happen let's say 1.75 minus 1 1 divided by minus r minus of 1 divided by r okay so this will become equal to 1.5 minus 1.75 To minus 2 by r okay so this is 1 by f fine so you are getting focal length as positive so f is greater than 0 so focal length is positive means what it means that when parallel rays come and hit this lens it will get converged forward then only you'll say that focal length is positive right so it becomes a converging lens okay so concave usually is diverging but when the medium's refractive index becomes more than the material refractive index the same diverging lens becomes or it will act as a converging lens okay so it becomes a convergent lens so option three and four they are out of question okay all of you have answered third for this hmm. focal length is 1.75 divided by 0.25 into r divided by 2 okay so this is um This is 4 into 0.875 times R, which is 3.5 times R. Okay. So, question 20, option 1 is correct. Okay. Any doubt, guys, on these two questions? Anything you want to ask? How do you know R1 is minus R? See, R is geometrical property. It, it is a concave lens, right? So this side should be like this. Okay. So center of curvature will be on the left hand side. Okay. So if center of curvature on the left hand side, you are measuring distance from here, you are moving against the incident ray, right? So for concave uh, surface, Radius center of curvature is this side, right? So that is the reason why radius of curvature of this side is negative. We are using sign convention. 